there was this club in Ortico. We knew that we would never get in through the door. We showed up on this fisherman boat and they let us through. Let's go to club, <laughs> guys. I received a phone call. She calls me and she tells me, David, where are your documents? I'm like, what? What's happening? There's a truck. People are going and taking things out. It was like a raid. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of our podcast. Yes. How are you guys doing this week? Hopefully better than we are. I think you guys don't cannot answer right now. So <laughs> just watch it. Sit tight. Respond in your head. Yeah. <laughs> How was your week, Eileen? How it was, was your good. weekend? It was good. Um, I went to... Did you do yoga? Yeah, I went to a yoga class, actually, in Gokturk. And then I went to a forest and walked around. It was really fun because the weather was quite nice. That was like all in one day? Yeah, imagine all of that in one day. <laughs> <laughs> so fun, so fresh. <laughs> so proud of us. <laughs> How about you, David? How was your weekend? It was a very peaceful week. It was a very nice weekend. Because you got over your sickness last week, right? So this week was probably still like chilling, getting out of it. <laughs> I feel like a little bit of sickness is still in me somehow. I really? Yeah. Still? Wow. I, somehow, I just feel like last week. Mm, very interesting. Right? Yeah. Honestly, me too. I'm getting a sense of deja vu. It's kind of... <laughs> it's like like we lived this date yeah, before. Groundhog Day. Yes. So, any plan for, for the next week you have? Um, no, but I really want to go ice skating once before winter season ends. You know what's cool, actually? Um, I like roller skating a lot. Yeah. And I used to roller blade, <laughs> like the long one. And then when I went to LA, everyone roller skates on the four wheels, like the traditional American one. And I wanted to get into roller skating. And I tried. It's very hard. It's very different. But I just saw that I think it's in Besiktas. They opened the first roller rink in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. And they teach like dance on skates. And like you can just go and skate with your friends. And it's to like, you Where know, house again? music. Somewhere in Besiktas. I think it's Besiktas. called Roller Deck or something or something roller like dick. that. <laughs> Why? Deck, deck. You roller know dick? Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, I haven't been, but it looks really cool on Instagram and I really want to go. It's in my like to-do list. Good. To to discover list. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. What's your plan for the week? Um, honestly, uh, these days I'm pretty much working on my <clears throat> life plans, <clears throat> like short-term plans, long-term plans. And also, um, I am very much focused on the projects I'm doing because they're there are many projects I'm doing at work. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are like creative projects. Some of them are HR projects. This week, we're going to talk about memories. Mm -hmm. Istanbul is a city where you make memories. I'm sure uh, many people in Istanbul, you guys have amazing memories. First of all, I would like to ask you guys to please feel free to share your memories. You can send us email info at me to talk dot cafe if you're listening to spotify and if you're on the youtube um you can just comment soundcloud call me comment so, we will read them we will certainly read them that's what makes us different from all the other people <laughs> don't <laughs> listen to anyone who, else but who, us. Have, who have millions of followers we will actually see your comments and we will feel some way about them and right respond to you right right you won't go unnoticed Yes. Memories, Eileen. Are you ready to talk about memories? Yes. I mean, um, I thought about this a little bit and um, I hope you have some funny ones because yeah, mine are very like, they're on the somber side of things. Okay. A lot of them. Okay. I, of course, I have a lot of funny memories, but the ones that come to mind, the ones that were formative are kind of on the more like, nostal like they make me feel nostalgic in a sad way rather than like, a, oh, that was really funny. Um, but yeah, so I hope we keep that balance here. Yes, cause <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And it was difficult for me to to try to mentally narrow down on all the things that I could talk about without, um, yeah, without mentioning anybody too much or without... You can mention people if you want to. I don't want to mention people. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, people. <laughs> so um, let's start with something fun. Uh, my first question for you would be, uh, 
what's one cool memory you would like to share? I mean, um, the, well, I guess the one cool thing is that I experienced so much stuff here for the first time in my life. Like mm -hmm. my first relationship was here oh, and yeah. it was in like middle school. So um, then, you know, first like school event, first heartbreak, I guess, first good friendship. All of those things were here for the first time in Istanbul. Yeah. And so um, I think that's why sometimes I struggle with these questions is because it's there's years of my life and there were so many formative things, but also I was young, like it was years ago. Yeah. So sometimes I forget certain things, but um, I guess one cool memory was there was, um, I was dating this person in high school and they, his family happened to have a motorcycle. And then yeah. one time after class, he picked me up on the motorcycle and we drove along the Bosphorus. And I felt like I was in like those Roman movies, you know, where <laughs> your hair is like, and I'm oh, like, oh yeah. my God, this is the best moment ever. <laughs> so, so romantic. And then yeah. actually we fell off of the motorcycle. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. On the same ride? Yeah, that same ride. Because we were going Damn. up this hill and it was too steep, Istanbul hills. Hills. And we couldn't make the turn. And basically wow. as we were going, going up the turn <laughs> the motorcycle started going backwards oh my god and i that's fell off fun yeah i wish i could see that 100 bucks for that <laughs> moment if anyone captured that moment please send it to us but I yeah pay 100 bucks i i don't know that just came to mind because i that was that was just fun i was like wow i'm on top of the world right now obviously i wasn't but and what happened like then it. when you fell off the then the motorcycle fell. I was like, oh my God, what do we do? And then we got back on and drove home. But, but yeah. nothing was like Like, before. I don't even know if we had helmets or anything. It was just... Oh, wow, really? Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of my memories here of being a teenager are actually like, when I reflect on it, I'm like... <laughs> wow, that was really unsafe. And like nowadays, if I knew that yeah, my child yeah. was doing that, I would be like, what is going on? Like, yeah. I mean, I would let them do it. I'm not only talking about like anything like drinking and stuff. I'm just talking about like normal daily things. Being just, clumsy. Yeah, because being, growing up in Istanbul is like, um, you're bound to experience all kinds of things and you're bound to be unsafe at certain moments just because it's a big city and you yeah. can't really control where your kid goes all the time and what yeah. they do. And you're just, you're in the city. Like you're interacting with, like we said before, all kinds of people and whatever. So yeah, that leads to really interesting memories. But what about you? What's your, um, what's a cool memory? So if I can think of a cool memory, I would probably, uh, okay, I have this very interesting memory happened to me in Istanbul. Um, I remember that was like probably three years ago. I was working in Fatih back in time. It was a uh, it was weekend, and I was so tired and bored. I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, I live in Istanbul, and it's the second year, and um, I'm just you know I am coming from work, and everything is super boring, and it's the weekend. I really want to do something, so I was waiting for Dolmuş. And then there was this guy came to me and asked me in Turkish, and uh, I pretended that I, I was too bored to answer. I pretended that I don't understand Turkish. And I said like, sorry, I don't speak Turkish. And the guy switched to English with an amazing New York accent. He asked me like, I'm asking if this Dolmuş going to Bostanji. And I was like, yeah, it does. <laughs> and right after I asked him, where are you from? And the guy was like, I'm Turkish American. Um, I live six months in New York, six months here. I have my businesses in New York and stuff. And we just started, you know, talking, you know, sharing some moments. And before, you know, Dolmuş gets everybody in and moving. So now we are in Dolmuş and the guy looks at me and says like, by the way, David, nice to meet you. I'm going to this party. If you want, you can join me. And at that moment, I'm like... It's the, it's the choice between my kidneys or pleasure. Are they gonna, <laughs> <laughs> am I going to lose my life or what? And I was like, you know what? You came to Istanbul for adventure. There you go. That's adventure. And I said, okay, let's go. Let's go to your party. And um, so we went to this party in somewhere in Suadia, but the uh, beach side, the Sahil side. And it was like a rooftop. So we, we went, we climbed all the way to the rooftop. It was a such a fancy party with exclusive <laughs> elite people of the city, people from other countries. There's some um, some American diplomats were there. There were some, you know, I mean, it's nice. really interesting. I was, and imagine I was there 
with my uh, shirt and shorts <laughs> backpack. <laughs> so I was so unfit for the party. <laughs> and uh, the guy, apparently, everybody knew him in the party. So he started going around introducing me to everyone like I'm the VIP guy. And it was a great Jamal Abi. Thank you so much. If you're <laughs> watching, his name was Jamal. Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching this Jamal Abi, thank you so much. It was a great <laughs> evening. It was a great night experience with Jamal Abi. From Nishantashi and New York. That sounds really fun. Talking about parties, actually, I was just thinking about this one time when, don't come after me, this was years ago, there's nobody to prosecute here, okay? But when I was under 18, <laughs> I was like 17 or 16 or something, there was this club in Ortaköy. Okay. Okay. That was like popping for our times, I guess. Yeah. And we what knew that, name? I think it was like, it was Angelique or something. Okay. <laughs> and um, we knew that we would never get in through the door. Like, that was the only place where security was strict. Okay. And I, yeah, I, I was like, I'm 17, I'm underage, whatever. Anyway, then we figured <laughs> out that we could take this fisherman's boat, basically. It's like, it it's literally looks like a fisherman's boat. It's a tiny okay. little boat that you take from some other random place and then it brings you from the front of the club which is the sea entrance and when you're coming in th through the sea they don't check ids <laughs> so wow me and my friends like three of us it was middle of the winter too like february i remember, boat, like, I remember <laughs> let's go to club <laughs> freezing, guys <laughs> freezing we get on this fisherman's boat there's this like amja he's like get in get in you know like we get in we sit we're like this in like heels <laughs> That's like stuff. a refugee boat kind of a thing, you know, crossing the border. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we're like shivering because it's open. It's not even close. Oh, it wow. was freezing. And yeah, and he, he brought us to the thing. I don't know why it's like this. It's like the least fancy form of transportation. Wow. I get it. If you're like showing up on the yacht, people have to let you in. But we're showed up on this fisherman boat and they let us through. And I had a great time. That's great. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm thinking about it now. Like I don't. I doubt that exists in a lot of other places. Like it's just such yeah, an Istanbul yeah, experience. Such Istanbul. Like it's such a weird experience. Weird experiences. Really, yeah. really weird experiences. You like, get. Where to do have. we find him? How do we? I don't know. I don't Who remember. Part of the idea. Yeah, of the yeah. First place. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. Interesting. Um, I want to move on to the weird and unexpected and a little bit maybe a scary memory. I want to move on to that. I would like to share this memory of my um, second house in Istanbul. First, my first house, I lived in Kuchikmeja, as I mentioned on previous episode. Um, the first experience with Kuchikmeja, I stayed there for a month. Second, I moved to Osman Bay and I had this housemate. Um, she was a Turkish girl studying law. Um, so what happened is that um, one day uh, I was outside. I was coming back home, like maybe 30 minutes till get getting back home i received a phone call she calls me and she tells me david where are your documents and, and passport and stuff like that and i don't like this question you know like this is <laughs> yeah, this no sounds this something question. is wrong <laughs> and i was like why why are you asking and he said like she said like uh the you know like police officers are here and uh we have like 15 what? minutes no to, way. to collect everything and leave. And I'm like, what? what's happening? Like, I have no idea what's going on. So I go to the, I go to the house. I see there's like a police car. There's a truck. People are going and taking things out. And I was like, <laughs> what? what am I, what, what did I get into? Like, what's happening? Apparently what happened, the contract finished. Okay. And the girl was not paying rent for like some time. Okay. Apparently. And the guy, the owner of the house said like, I'm going to kick you out of this house. And the girl was like, I studied law and I, you can't do anything. <laughs> and, and, the guy, yeah, and the guy did it. The guy <laughs> went to court, got the paper and oh, called wow. her and said, I have the paper of evacuation. You need to leave. And the girl still resisted and said like, no, you can, you have the paper, but you cannot do anything. <clears throat> um, and the guy did it. The guy basically came with and. They were like, and now imagine they're in the house and the girl is trying to take their picture video, like this hostile thing. And the guy started to take my video. I was like, guys, please just, I want to be out of this house. <laughs> so imagine in 50, I lost half of my stuff in that house. Half of my they stuff They just gone. took it. Gone. I didn't even have time to collect them because they, it was like a raid. 
You know, Whoa. it was like a raid of my house. How many years had you been living here for at that point? That was like six, seven months I was living there. Okay, so you were like, uh, it's time to get and out of here. And honestly, I was in love with the house. It was such a beautiful house in Kutulush somewhere, I guess. It was like we oh, had I'm some sorry. Spanish neighbors. House was a very beautiful house. Anyway, imagine like this is the 15 minutes later. I am homeless with a sack, <laughs> like like hamal. <laughs> I'm walking in in Osman May, and I don't have a house. I'm like that's it, end the end of a house. I'm homeless, just like that. And I and I had no friends. It was like first year. I had no friends. I just had one friend, uh, Freddy. Uh, <laughs> shout out to Freddy. He lives in Germany now. Uh, Fred um, hosted me for a night and. Um, I had that um, the next day I woke up at seven, I started searching for a house and I met my next housemate, which we lived together for two, three years and still we are friends. Uh, my friend from Copenhagen, Dugi. And um, so uh, that was it, that I was very lucky and I'm I'm so happy that happened to me because I met with, you know, Dugu and Jem and it was a great experience being with them. But that experience was really, really intense. Mm -hmm. and. Very funny thing, a week before this happens, we were on a camping, a lady came to me and told me like, do you believe in um, um, kahve fall? You know, yeah. to kahve fall, fortune telling, coffee ever. fortune telling. And I said, okay, and I don't have any comment. And the, the lady just did it for me. And the first thing the lady told me, just a week before this thing happened to me, the, the lady looked at the cop and looked at me and said like, very soon you will lose your house and you will find a better house. No way. And it was so funny for me at the time when I heard it because I was like, I love my house. I'm not going to move out. But it was, yeah, that's something really that's crazy. weird and crazy happened to me. That reminds me, actually, one of our like after school activities with my friends okay. was to go and get our fortunes told. Really? <laughs> yeah. With yeah. a coffee? Yeah, yeah. Usually okay. it was it was a coffee. There was this one lady. I, honestly, I didn't really like her. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> They always have like some some weird vibe, but I guess it like works. You just expect them to be like kind of mean to you. They're just like, girl, th who is this person? Who is this person that starts with the letter A? <laughs> <laughs> He's really bad for you. He's gossiping about you. You know, what I mean? like yeah. it's always like a big thing. It's like, cause yeah. not so, like, and you're like, oh my god, my whole life <laughs> sucks, and everybody in my life wants to like murder me, whatever. But I don't know. It was just really entertaining to us to just go and find out what's going on look at coffee and then Perfect. leave but again it's like what that's such a weird like imagine you go to the u.s and you're like yeah wh what did you guys do after school like people hang out at malls and <laughs> that's stuff super weird, we went to way. a fortune teller fortune teller <laughs> like after school we go to fortune teller that's fun. yeah but it's a it's a big thing here and i actually like it i i i like fortune tellers sometimes because you know the i don't know i feel like you even if they're lying or if they're making things up you still learn something about yourself even through how you're reacting to what they yeah. might be telling you you know because they might tell you something random but then your brain creates something else in response and it's like that's what you should be paying attention to i see yeah, yeah. i mean that's also the case with the fortune tell <laughs> do you have any fortune <laughs> fortune or be fortune fortune day <laughs> <laughs> so any scary memory or something i was trying to remember i'm i'm not too sure right now about scary memories i have a lot of sad memories for sure sad memories yeah like um uh, for me and um the when we we spoke about um the like istanbul and big cities being transitionary spaces mm -hmm. A lot of people I loved left. They moved somewhere else. A lot of people I was close to, um, you know, yeah, just moved away. Mm -hmm. Or I was moving away a lot of the time and then coming back and then moving again. So for me, weirdly enough, the defining areas in Istanbul are the airports. Well, before it used to be the Ataturk Airport and now it's the new airport. I love the Ataturk Airport. Yeah, me too, honestly. It was, it was good. It was the middle of the city. It was good while it, was... it lasted. But then it's always really nice when people visit and they yeah. come back. Yeah. And everybody loves to come back here. People people love come to back, visit Istanbul. Come back! To those who left, to those <laughs> who want to visit, please visit Istanbul. Visit us. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's such a such a place. You might make amazing memories, yeah. Yeah. Bosphorus memories. There there are certain Bosphorus memories. There's I mean when we're talking it's about like memories. It's like a separate category like a, of yeah, memory. Certainly, certainly. 
too many interesting memories. Just what's something that's like just unexplained and weird, just outrageous yeah, memory. Yeah, some, something really weird memory you can. Yeah, give us give us something fun and spicy yeah. to yeah, work yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I wanna I wanna ask about um, something that people like to talk about: uh, romantic memories. Mm. So, why don't you share with us the most beautiful romantic Istanbul memories you've ever had in Istanbul? Yeah, and maybe what location it was in. What location? I mean, share as much as you feel like, of course. It's, <laughs> it's a matter your of bedroom. privacy. Yeah. <laughs> Again, no, you're it, going back to my bedroom. What's happening? Not yours, Okay, man. every time you're saying your bedroom. It's not all bedroom. about you. Your bedroom. Oh, your bedroom. Okay, your Hypothetical bedroom, bedroom yeah, that exists true, somewhere. True, Yeah. So share, please. <laughs> go ahead. What? How do you guys think memories define a person? Do they define a person? Are they important? And one bonus question I have. Bonus question. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points for this question. <laughs> Ten points for Gryffindor. Call these numbers right now and get our gift packs today. No, they get to go to Martin Hogwarts and Wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, do you guys think that it's appropriate for me to share things that Eileen shared with me behind the scenes? Should I say it in front of the camera or not? If you guys say don't. If you don't, get it right. You if you guys to, say you get no, to go I will and stop eat sharing. Some weird food I will definitely me. stop sharing. But if you say keep going on, I will be sharing details, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so your choice. All right. All right. It was nice talking to you again. It was great yes. having you again. Yes, again and again and again. Have a wonderful <laughs> week, Island. You as well. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.